Hey guys, I've been getting a lot of great feedback on my PPC videos, so I figured I'd do another Q&A video with you here. This time, this is gonna be 10 questions about Amazon PPC, but related to optimizing. So maybe you've set up your campaigns a little bit more, or you've been running them for you know several weeks to several months, and now you're thinking about how to optimize those campaigns. So these questions, or these groups of questions, is gonna be all about optimizing your Amazon PPC campaigns. If you guys don't know, my name is Lamar and I'm a seven figure Amazon FBA seller. I have three private label brands and I've been selling on Amazon for just over three and a half years now. Both within my business and with my clients' businesses, I've spent millions of dollars on Amazon PPC and I'm actually in the trenches. I'm there building those campaigns, analyzing those campaigns. I haven't handed this job off to anybody else because quite frankly, I do enjoy it. I like thinking about the process. I've probably spent too much time thinking about the process to be honest with you, but I see a lot of value in Amazon PPC and really trying to get to know it and refine my skills as best as I can. The positive of this is it's given me a lot of hands-on experience dealing with some large budgets and really optimizing those Amazon PPC campaigns. I've gotten a lot of great questions both on the YouTube channel and within my mastermind class where if you guys are interested in getting more information about the mastermind class or just learning about how to sell on Amazon in general, you're gonna wanna click the link in the description below. But anyways, this video is about you guys and some of the common questions that I've gotten about optimizing Amazon PPC campaigns. If you have a question about Amazon PPC, please drop a comment below and I'll answer it there or you might end up on one of my next videos. Without further ado guys, let's jump in here and take a look at question number one. The first question here comes from Audit and he says, how frequently do I optimize PPC campaigns? And the data that you look at, is it from the full lifetime of the data report or is it since your last optimization? So Audit, thanks for the question. This is a great question. Uh, there's kind of a couple parts here. Essentially, if I've just launched the product, I'm pretty much checking the campaigns that I've set up every couple of days. I wanna make sure that I'm getting enough impressions and enough clicks you know, to my listing through those PPC campaigns. And if I'm not getting enough clicks, then I'm gonna be increasing the budgets or you know, increasing the bids, making some sort of adjustment to the campaign. Now, let's say we are a couple weeks or maybe a couple months after launch period. Normally, I'm adjusting or making optimizations to those campaigns every two to three weeks. That seems to be a right about, that seems to be enough time where enough data has accumulated and I can go in and make actual changes to those campaigns. So I'd say on average every two to three weeks at a typical time. And then the last stage of this is once you have a mature campaign or you've kind of refined your campaign, you've isolated your keywords that you're gonna be targeting in your exact ad group. And normally if I'm happy with the A cost, I, I don't touch it at all. I kind of just let the campaign run and only interact with the campaign if I notice a problem or a sudden change in the way that the campaign has been running. So I have some campaigns that I honestly haven't touched in probably six, seven, eight months. Once I've kind of set it up and it's in cruise control, I just let it run and I don't touch it at all. Like I said, unless there becomes an issue with it. The second part of your question was, how much data do I look at when I'm making the optimization? And I take or look at as much data as Amazon will give us from that search term report. And I believe it's set up right now for two months. So I'll take that full two month window and I'll look at all of that data and then make optimizations based off of that. And the reason for that is I wanna be looking at as much data as possible to help me inform the best decision that I can make at that time. And it's two month window right now, so that's what I use to make optimizations. The next question comes from Rick. 
and Rick asks, how do I control my ad placement? This is a great question, Rick. Um, I'm very serious about you know, ad placement, controlling my ad placement. I'm sure you guys have also thought a lot about ad placement and how do you get your product to the top of page one for your specific keyword. A couple ways that you can do this. Um, first and foremost, there's uh, product targeting now, which Amazon just rolled out, I believe at the beginning of this year, which is awesome. It allows us to uh, target specific products on Amazon and place our ad within their product page. That's super powerful. You also have features of adjusting your bid increase to top of page one or rest of page within, I believe, your ad settings for a particular manual campaign. So that's an option. However, more times than not, especially if you're running an exact uh, match ad group on a specific search term or keyword, I will just search that keyword in Amazon and see where I'm coming up on the page. Maybe I'm on page two. I'll increase the bid a little bit and see how my ad placement is adjusted with that bid increase. Normally, Amazon's pretty responsive. So if you increase your bid uh, by 10, 20, 30 cents, you check back you know, 10 minutes later, sometimes even a little bit faster than that, you'll see your ad placement adjusted directly on Amazon after searching that specific term. Next question comes from Magda, and Magda asks, what do I do with keywords eating up my budget? Also a great question here, Magda. So if the keyword is eating up your budget and you're trying to eliminate it, okay, if it's in your auto, your broad, or your phrase match type, I'm normally negative exacting it. Um, a negative exact will prevent your ad or your product from showing up within that respective ad group. Now, if it's an exact match keyword that you're bidding on and you're, it's eating up a lot of your budget, I will reduce the bid. So if the bid is just too high and the ACoS is too high on that exact match type, then I'm just gonna reduce the bid a little bit. The flip side of this question is, let's say you have one keyword and maybe it's, typically this happens is if it's your main keyword and it's eating up a lot of budget within your exact ad group, okay, with all your other exact terms that you're bidding on and what's happening is that exact term is stealing a lot of the budget and you're not getting enough budget to all the other exact terms, maybe they're a little bit long tail terms and you want to, you know, get impressions on those terms. Those terms are also generating sales. But the problem is that you have this one term that's eating up the full budget. In that case, what I will sometimes do is just increase the overall budget so that I can get some budget to those secondary or long tail keywords. Or I will pull out that one keyword that's eating up a lot of the budget and create another campaign by itself. So that way I can control the budget directly for that specific keyword and then I can have all my long tail keywords have a budget for themselves as well. But regardless, great question Magda and it's definitely a question that I've had in the past and I'm sure lots of other people have. Next question is from Ivan and Ivan asks, how many orders should my PPC versus organic be generating? So obviously, with this question um, and with your business and my business, everyone's business is a little bit different. I would say here again, typically speaking, anywhere from 15 to 30% of your sales should be coming through Amazon PPC. Now, if it's more than that, you probably don't have a strong enough organic rank and you're not getting enough organic sales. If it's less than that, you might be missing out on some sales and you could probably increase your bids a little bit. But typically I see a healthy ratio of about 15 to 30% of sales coming through PPC. Next question is from Joseph. And Joseph asks, I just started my automatic campaign and I'm only seeing ASINs in the search term report, why? This is a great question, uh, Joseph. Thanks for the question. Normally, if you're only seeing ASINs in your search term report for your automatic campaign, 
means that Amazon does not understand your listing fully. Remember, the automatic campaign is essentially telling Amazon to automatically run your advertising campaign. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna scan your product listing and make good estimations or, more, or good guesses about where your product should be advertised on the Amazon platform. If you're only seeing ASINs and you're not seeing any uh, keywords or search terms within your search term report, chances are Amazon doesn't understand your listing. So do you have proper uh, keywords in the back end? Do you have uh, proper uh, keywords written throughout your product uh, detail page? You know, in the bullets, in your title, have you gone through there and make sure that you're repeating those main keywords so that Amazon really can hone in and clearly understand what your product is. So you just wanna make sure that you have a check over your listing uh, so that Amazon can fully understand what your product listing is so that they can automatically advertise for you. Joseph also has a follow-up question here and he goes, what does ASINs in the search term report mean? Now I love this question because I remember for a long time, I was also very confused about why ASINs were showing up in the search term report. There's no way a customer is searching that ASIN and your ad is being displayed there. And I remember first starting out selling on Amazon and doing a lot of research about why this was happening and there's not a lot of accurate information out there about why the ASIN is being displayed in the search term report. However, now I believe that I have the answer and this does make a lot of sense when we come and think about it. So there's two main ways people will end up on a product page on Amazon. The first and most obvious way is that they're gonna go directly to that Amazon search bar, they're gonna punch in a keyword, they're gonna look at the search results, and they're gonna click on a product page and come on to a product page. That is the most obvious way people can land on a product page. And in that case, they typed in a search term, and that search term, let's say that they then clicked on your ad within that product page that they clicked on, will show up in the search term report. Now. The other main way that people can land on a product page is directly through some external source. There's lots of people mentioning Amazon products on blog posts, YouTubers, emails, right? There's many external sources, advertising, Facebook ads, Google ads. There are different or other ways that customers can land on those product pages from external sources. Now, in that case, the customer didn't search a search term. So they're just landing directly on that product page on Amazon, and then they might click on a sponsored ad within that product page. If your ad happens to be displayed there and they click on that ad, Amazon isn't going to credit some search term as the referring uh, aspect to that ad click, they just refer it to that ASIN. So that's what's happening there, is that external traffic is coming to the search term page result, they're clicking on your ad, and Amazon is crediting that click to the ASIN. Makes pretty much sense now that you think about it. But still, a great question, Joseph, and I've thought about that for a long time as well, so I'm happy that I'm able to answer that for you and get it cleared up. The next question comes from Yasmin and he asks, how do you decide to pause a keyword or negative it or lower the bid? There's three uh, main scenarios that kind of fall along with this question. And the first one is, if you find the search term in the auto campaign or your broad or phrase ad group or match type, what I essentially do there is I just do a negative exact. So by negative exacting that uh, search term within either of those uh, match types, you'll essentially be stopping impressions and clicks for it. And I typically favor the negative exact as a way to uh, cut that spend or cut those impressions going to that specific search term. The next scenario, let's say that this uh, search term is in your exact match group. Well, in that case, 
if you haven't gotten a lot of sales or it's been a long time and you just haven't seen sales or maybe you got one sale or two sales from it and you've moved it into your um, exact uh, match type but you just haven't seen any sales from it in quite some time, I will often just pause it because maybe it's eating up a lot of budget, maybe you're trying to take drastic cuts to your campaign and you need to make choices on how to do that, so I'll just pause it. Another thing that you could do though um, would be that if you find the search term in your exact uh, match type campaign, then you could reduce the bid. So if the ACoS is really high, you know, in that case or in that scenario, I'll be just reducing or lowering that bid to make sure or try to still, you know, acquire sales through that search term, but just at a more profitable level. The next question comes from Gus and Alan. They actually asked the exact same question, so we know this is a good one. And they ask, when moving search terms from broad or auto to exact, do I negative them as well? Um, and I used to not do this. I used to just make sure that the exact match type was the highest bid, and you can completely do that. Um, but more recently, or now I am starting to do that, and when I move the search term from broad or auto and I'm moving it up to exact, I will negative exact that same search term in the ex respective original campaign. And that just makes sure that I'm not uh, overlapping impressions between the two uh, match types. And it just allows us to analyze the search term a little bit more clearly when it's in exact. So I hope that that answer kind of cleared up that confusion. The next question comes from John. So John asks, I'm running sponsored ads and obviously my competitor sees my ads. Could they theoretically just keep clicking on my ad and then run up my spend or run out my budget, you know, costing me a lot of, um, a lot of funds. So that's a great question. I've thought about this a lot. It's obviously a concern for us sellers because there are some bad eggs out there that would just sit there all day clicking on our sponsored ads, eating up our budget. However, the good news is that Amazon takes click fraud very seriously. And this is essentially what it is. It's click fraud. And it takes about 72 hours for Amazon to kind of analyze all of the PPC data and then report on that data accurately and have our metrics reflect accurately. And that's one of the reasons why we don't wanna make optimizations too soon. Like if you're looking at data that happened yesterday, it's probably not 100% accurate just yet because they're still making adjustments to that data. So you wanna allow a window of 72 hours minimally. And one of that reasons for that is because they're analyzing for click fraud and they know our IP address and what IP address is kind of clicking on specific ads. So if they start registering a bunch of uh, clicks from a single IP address, I'm sure that they're going to remove that or somehow you know recompensate or not count those clicks towards that ad campaign. So I wouldn't be too worried about click fraud um, on your ad campaign. So John, I hope that it kind of relaxes your nerves a little bit there when in regards to click fraud. The next question comes from Mary and Mary asks, uh, when do I adjust my budget for my campaign? And Mary, I wanna talk about uh, three different scenarios or three different cases that I adjust my budget. The first one is when I'm about to run out of stock. So let's say that I've identified I'm gonna be running out of stock within a month or two months out. One of the first things that I do is either reduce my budget or drop my budget down to a pretty low amount, even go as far as like $1 per day. Other times I'll even just pause my campaigns in some cases. And the reason for that is I just don't wanna be overspending while I'm about to run out of stock. I wanna increase my profit as much as possible and reduce my expenses. The next scenario is that if you have a very good A cost, Let's say that your A cost is really great. There's no reason why you wouldn't want your budget to essentially be unlimited. 
you don't want to cap out your budget when you have a profitable return and your A cost is acceptable. You kind of want to just set it to an unlimited amount or a higher budget so that you're not capping out every single day, again, if that campaign is profitable for you. And the last point I want to make about uh, budget changes is if you're going into a peak season or a holiday season, like the upcoming holiday season, if we know that there's gonna be increased traffic on the Amazon website, I'll increase my budget. Here again, assuming that the A cost is good, but in anticipation for the holiday season or that peak season, and we know that there's just gonna be more traffic on Amazon, and we don't want our budget to run out when there's that additional traffic. So in that case, I will also raise my budget. So I hope that that has kind of answered that question. And in general, that was the last question for today. Um, I hope that you guys got value out of this video. If you have, please hit the thumbs up button and remember to subscribe to the channel. And if you've got a question yourself, you know, about Amazon PPC or about anything else, drop a comment in the comment section below. Really appreciate all the comments out there. I'd be happy to answer your question. And if you guys are interested in, you know, joining me in my mastermind, getting more detail, a complete step-by-step -step process to everything Amazon FBA so that you can go out there and crush it on Amazon with your own private label product, click the link below and consider joining my Amazon FBA Launchpad course where I literally take you through um, everything you need to know about Amazon FBA and to be successful on Amazon FBA. So without further ado, guys, I'll see you on the next video. Have a great weekend.